Hey Motorheads, it's your boy MP, coming at you live and direct from the Hell Omega headquarters out here in beautiful San Francisco, California. The car on the menu tonight is a video request, it is the Audi A5 2.0. I did drive the car, I do have some driving footage that I'm going to tag, um, you know, link up uh, alongside this video here in a bit. But I want to get right to it with the car because the car is a very complex uh, animal. And the reason being is... Um, there's a lot of variations of the car. Obviously, you have the A4 for 2000. I'm sorry, A5 for 2010 2.0 turbo motor that they use in the A4. They use in the A3, the Volkswagen GTI, Volk, uh, the Audi TT. They use that motor on a whole line of cars. Uh, you have the A5 3.2. Of course, you have that grizzly ass S5. Um, but for the for the sake of the video, we're gonna focus on the A5 2.0 turbo because I think it is the car that can open up the most doors and also. Um, the most affordable. They're going to mass produce this car. As many of you might know, a lot of you motorheads out there know, the A5 is absolutely spectacular. Um, the first thing that grabs your attention with the car is the, obviously those just beautiful lines on the car. When you start the front of the car, she's a little bit bold in the front. Um, she like, it's like, it almost like looks like she's like coming out at you a little bit, especially when you bring in those LED uh, daytime running lights. Um, the car's face is just like, Ah, oh, so perfect. I mean, it's like the best, in my opinion, one of the best looking cars under $100,000. Um, it's just out of this world. The lines are just so right, so aggressive, especially when I'm talking about that that bold front end, right? How it kind of um, sticks out a little bit. It's a little bit like rounded around the tires. That line that trails down that and comes down the doors and it tapers around the back. It gets really thin. It's really strong in the front, kind of thins down the back. It wraps into the rear tail lights. It's just such a dramatic line. It's such a great car. Every single line on this car has a purpose. There's no just why. Sometimes you look at cars and they have lines that just finish nowhere and you don't know where they're going. It's like, what the hell are you thinking? This car is like, per everything ties together with this car. The design on this car is just out of this world. Um, and I think what they did for 2010, getting out of those old dated um, taillights and putting on those LED lights, the trunk almost looks, and this is scary to say, I'm not going to lie. The trunk looks better on this car than the front because remember, when you're going fast, all people are going to see is your trunk end, and trunk end anyways. So it's important that your trunk design is just as beautiful as your front. So when that line comes around and fades into those LED beautiful tail lights, the lip of the trunk also has a beautiful line that comes around to the front by the handle. Oh my God, I can't really stress. Please, don't even drive the car. Just find an A5. And just follow all the lines around the car and you can literally walk all the way around the car. It ties the whole entire car together. It's just an absolutely beautiful car. And the scary thing is once you get inside, it's just as beautiful. So uh, the one thing that's amazing about this car, when you're sitting at the steering wheel, everything is geared around the, the driver. So you're sitting at the wheel, the navigation screen, the radio head, everything reads through the MMI. That screen is tilted a little bit for the driver so it's easily... Um, accessible to your eyes while driving. You have all this control panels slanted on the car, easy for you to one touch the windows, adjust your mirrors, hit the seat memorization, what have you. When you turn the car on, when you fire it up and all these lights, all these red lights just jump out at you when it's nighttime, of course, you feel like you're in the cockpit, cockpit of a jet. It's absolutely unreal. The car is, it makes you feel special, you know what I'm saying? This is definitely a car that you feel like you're in a Lamborghini, you feel like you're in a Porsche. I mean, everyone that sits in the car, everyone that drives the car comments, how sensational you feel. Your whole image, you almost have to step your whole fit game up when you're driving this car. You can't be walking around with no Hanes white tee and some, um, some scaggly jeans. You need to be proper when you're in this car. You need to show some, this car some respect because it's definitely going to change your whole game, your whole persona. I mean, the car visually is unreal. And that's the problem is that it's visually unreal. And, you know, I'm saying this boldly because I actually have an A5 on order right now. But you have to do some things to the A5 to really get the performance that you want. And I, I note this in the video, the gearbox is a little too big. When you're shifting from first to second, you feel like you're rowing a boat. It's a little too long from a performance car. I like the gearbox like a G37 or a Nissan uh, 370Z. It's a short shift. You get to the point. Why waste time bullshitting around going from first to second when you're supposed to be speeding and enjoying the car? Um, it's heavy. It's like 3,900 plus pounds. So, I mean, you've got all this body weight around you with the Quattro all-wheel drive system. So, of course, the all-wheel drive is going to give you this incredible driving experience, right? But at the same time, you have to remember that body weight slows you down. I can't emphasize that enough. So, keep that in the back of your head. I can't, you know, I'm not going to preach on the S5. I want to do a special video for the S5. That car is so rocking and so much fun to drive. You feel like you're actually being 
catapulted from the car. It's like that shotgun sensation every time you shift gears. You don't really get that with the A5 2.0 and it is a turbo. Now, if you wanted to spend six, seven, eight hundred dollars and chip the car, that's going to open up a ton of doors. Now the car is stock 211 horsepower, 258 foot pounds of torque. Um, it's doing zero to 60 in the 6.5, 6.7 range, depending on your you know automatic or manual transmission. But when you chip it, that's going to bump you way up in the torque game, way up in the horsepower game. I think your horsepower can be as high as like 240. Um, so it's going to offer you a lot more performance and create a, a much more suitable driving experience from a car that looks that way. Unarguably, no matter if you like BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Lexus, whatever you like, you can't deny the beauty behind the Audi A5. But what you can argue is that at that price point, is the drive worth it? Now, I do think it's very smooth. I think that it can open a lot of doors in terms of track, city, snow, whatever, because the Quattro system. But are you looking for a car that's pure performance or just a well-balanced car? The car is well balanced, but I don't think it's a pure performance kind of a car. Um, that's just my personal take on it, and I have one on order. So please believe, I think the car is the shit. And I'm going to do some things to my motor, though. Don't think that it's going to be a cookie cutter, right out of the box, fun to drive. You have to be willing to invest the time to take it somewhere, invest the money to get it to where it needs to be, and then you have a driving machine. Um, but all in all, I think that they've made some great improvements with that 2.0 motor. I know a lot of motorheads are going to be like, well, the GTI is so fast, the A3 is so fast, even the EOS is quick, and it has that same motor, but it doesn't have the transmission. Remember, those cars are on DSG, and also remember, those cars are front wheel drive, a lot less body weight, and they're a lot tinier cars. So a bigger car, more body weight, slower transmission means slower performance. Don't fool yourself. Just because you think it has the same motor does not mean it's going to drive the same. The center of gravity is really good on the car, so the handling is sharp. Um, four reasons to buy the car. I'm going to fire them off. Styling, out of this world. Okay, Fit and finish, out of this world. All-wheel drive system, I'm an all-wheel drive driver. If you're a rear-wheel drive kind of a person, this is not your car. Um, the technology on the car, we made some great adjustments in 2010. The A5 got brilliant with the 3G um, MMI system. And of course, um, a little adjustment with the LED daytime, um, running, I'm sorry, not LED daytime running, it's LED trunk lights. For me, that's actually a reason to get a 2010 over 2009. The fourth reason is the simple reason that you can modify that motor, you get to where you want to be, and you can have an ultimate driving machine. For under 50 grand, you won't find anything to be better motoring in. So in the meantime, drive what you got, love what you drive, and keep on motoring.